We're expecting more information about the arrest of the former head of cryptocurrency firm FTX. Monday, Sam Bankman fried was taken into custody in the Bahamas at the request of U.S. authorities. The one-time CEO has been under investigation from his latest firm collapse last month, leaving around a million investors with losses. And while the criminal charges from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York are still being set to be unsealed sometime soon, the Securities and the Exchange Commission has announced that it has filed unrelated charges against Bankman Freed for orchestrating a scheme to defraud equity investors. Jared Hill has more today. A one-time king of crypto now in police custody. Monday, 30-year-old Sam Bankman Freed, the former CEO of embattled crypto exchange FTX, was arrested in the Bahamas at the request of federal prosecutors for the Southern District of New York. FTX grew to become the second largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Bankman freed at one point worth an estimated $32 billion. This fall, it all unraveled in a matter of days when concerns arose about the strength of FTX's finances. Investors started pulling their money en masse, but FTX couldn't pay up. The question, whether the company was misusing customer funds to back risky bets at Alameda Research, a hedge fund also owned by Bankman Freed. Investors have lost a lot of money, and to me that um, points to the need for much um, more regulation of this sector. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen spoke about FTX during an appearance earlier this month on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. There's some regulatory authority, but huge holes. And so this is a sector where innocent investors um, can really lose their money. Today on Capitol Hill, the House Financial Services Committee is holding a pre-planned hearing investigating the collapse of FTX and its impact on the industry as a whole. Meantime, the company Detect is voluntarily recalling more than 11,000 COVID-19 tests because of an increased risk of false negatives. The test is an over-the-counter nasal swab, and three batches of the test were shipped to customers between the dates of July 26th and August 26th. Detect says it has not received any reports of any false negatives, but the recall is being done out of an abundance of caution. Detect is offering a refund for those affected tests. You can find more information on the FDA's website to get more knowledge on that. And sticking with COVID-19, as the triple threat of COVID-19 flu and RSV surges across the U.S., some cities and countries, counties that is, are urging residents to once again mask up. Respiratory illness cases have spiked since the Thanksgiving holiday, and health officials worry of a similar situation as families gather and travel again for Christmas. Gene Sullivan has a look at the latest numbers and what people should do to protect themselves. Respiratory illnesses are surging across the U.S. <sighs> Cases of COVID-19, the flu, and RSV are spiking. Infections taking up across the country. In places like Oregon, New York City, Metro Seattle, in Los Angeles County and Alameda County, California, health officials are urging people once again to mask up. With a higher number of cases, we see more transmission. This means that your chance of catching COVID will increase. The CDC says much of the country is under a high level of COVID transmission. And in the last week, a majority of states saw a rise in COVID hospitalizations. This is in the backdrop of uh, one of the worst flu seasons in a decade. Flu cases have hit some of their highest early levels in years. The CDC estimates 13 million illnesses, 120,000 hospitalizations, and 7,300 deaths so far this season. As cases surge, hospitals are overrun with more than 80% of beds in use. That's higher than any other point during the pandemic. Just imagine, God forbid, that you may have a heart attack or you may be pregnant and have to go to the hospital because of, of early labor, and those hospitals are full. So this affects everybody. Following the Thanksgiving holiday, cases spiked. Health officials are urging people to get the COVID booster now since it takes two weeks to reach full effect. That puts us right at Christmas. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. 
Guyane's president has implored graduates of the University of Guyane to stay and build Guyane and resist the temptation to migrate. Delivering the feature address virtually at the 56th convocation ceremony at the University of Guyane, the president admitted that for far too long university graduates have been leaving Guyane to work and settle in other countries. He says the brain drain issue has caused the country to lose critical skills and expertise over the years, and Guyane can no longer afford the migration of the most skilled citizens. President Ali appealed to the patriotism of the graduates as he urged them to help in and join to develop Guyane even as the country's economy continues to grow. You must safeguard our national patrimony and ensure that all benefit from the fruits of national development. Sometimes to our peril and regret, we opt for the easy route. For too long, outward migration had deprived our country of skilled persons particularly university graduates. A large percentage of graduates have opted to seek opportunities overseas. The grass may appear greener on the other side, but reality often collides with perception. Guyana is not only your home, it belongs to you and to all Guyanese. Stay and help realize its unquestionable potential. Your education, experience, enthusiasm, and enterprise are needed to ignite the engines of national development. 